Come in closer, let me whisper something in your ear about Gypsy. Yeah, it's that quest. Yeah. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer, and welcome to Stack Quest. Today we have a gentle introduction to Chipseek. Note, this Stack Quest is based on the gentle introduction to RNA Seek. So watch that first unless you're already totally down with RNA Seek. Okay, we've got a bunch of cells. Inside each cell, there's a nucleus. And inside each nucleus, there are a bunch of chromosomes. Let's focus on the chromosomes. Specifically, let's focus on these chromosomes. Chromosomes are made out of chromatin. Chromatin is made out of DNA, plus histones, a type of protein, plus other proteins that we'll talk about some other day. They're not that important for understanding chip seek. DNA wraps around the histones to package DNA, and the packaging can regulate gene transcription. Depending on how they are modified, histones can activate or repress genes. Lots more can be said about chromatin and how it's packaged, but that's for another day. Today we just need to know that chromatin is essentially DNA wrapped around histones. To simplify things, let's just use this big blue line to represent chromatin from here on out, but remembering that it's made of DNA and histone proteins and let these big brown arrows represent genes. And let this green circle represent a histone that allows transcription. And let this red stop sign represent a histone that represses transcription. In a cell, all kinds of proteins can bind to DNA. This mustard colored thing might promote gene transcription of this gene. And this pinkish colored thing might repress this gene. And who knows what this green thing is doing? We can use CHIP-seq to find out. CHIP-seq stands for chromatin immunoprecipitation combined with high throughput sequencing. It identifies the locations in the genome bound by proteins. That's the most important thing in this stat quest, so I'll say it again in bold. ChIP-seq identifies the locations in the genome bound by proteins. For example, say like we wanted to identify all the regions in the genome bound by the green thing. The first thing we do is use formaldehyde, or something like it, to glue all the proteins bound to the DNA together with the DNA. This means that all of the DNA-bound proteins, including the ones we're not interested in, are glued to the DNA. The next thing we do is cut the DNA up into small, approximately 300 base pair, fragments. Then we isolate the protein we're interested in, in this case, we're interested in the green thing, using an antibody. The black star represents an antibody that is attached to a bead. Then we isolate the proteins bound by the antibody and wash everything else away. Then we reverse the formaldehyde glue by warming up everything. Then we isolate the DNA by washing away the proteins, including the histones. Now that we see how to isolate DNA that is bound by a particular protein, let's take a step back. So far, the example has focused on just these chromosomes. But the process, glue proteins to DNA, cut up DNA, bind proteins of interest with antibodies, isolate antibodies, unglue and wash away proteins, applies to all the chromosomes in the cell. And it is usually applied to a pool of six million cells, give or take a few. So we end up with a lot of DNA fragments from a lot of cells. Then, just like with RNA-seq, we prepare a sequencing library by adding sequencing adapters to both ends of the DNA fragments. Then, just like RNA-seq, we PCR amplify the library, check the library concentration, sequence, 
filter out garbage reads, and then align the high quality reads to a genome. That is to say, if this is the genome, the first read might come from here, a location on chromosome 2. The second read might come from here, a location on chromosome 1. The third read might come from here, another position on chromosome 1, etc., etc., etc. Ultimately, we get a long list of genomic coordinates for all the reads, usually between 50 and 100 million reads. And we can use those reads to create a genome browser track. These are genes and chromosome positions in the mouse genome, MM10 to be exact. This is the track that we created for our ChIP-seq reads. A lot of reads map to this region, and relatively few reads map to these other regions. This track was made from a control experiment. The control track was made by taking some of the input chromatin from the original ChIP-seq experiment. And, without using an antibody to enrich for any particular protein, ungluing all the proteins and washing them off. Then sequencing, aligning, and converting into a track. In summary, the control track uses some of the same input chromatin for the ChIP-seq experiment but doesn't try to enrich for any particular protein binding. We use the control track to verify that a high concentration of reads in the ChIP-seq track is due to a protein binding there and not because a lot of reads map to a repetitive region. Statistically significant peaks are usually represented on genome tracks by rectangular bars. We could then compare peaks for the same protein in different cell types, like lung versus kidney. Or, if we didn't know the specific DNA sequence that this green thing bound to, we could guess that it is a motif found in all of the peaks. Here's a motif found within the peaks that indicate where the green thing bound. The large letters are more frequently associated with the green thing than the little letters. We can also try to determine the functional role of the green thing by looking at where it binds relative to the genes. Here, we see that the green thing binds near the start of a gene, so it might regulate that gene in some way. Anyway, those are some of the things you can do with ChIP-seq. In summary, ChIP-seq identifies the locations in the genome bound by proteins. BAM! Hooray! We made it to the end of another exciting stat quest. If you like this stat quest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you want to support stat quest, please click the like button and consider buying one of my original songs. Okay, until next time, quest on!